In this segment, we'll show you how to install the tongue braces, connect the flow control rod, and install the flow control gauge. Begin by placing one end of the tongue brace, part 6, in between the left wheel and the hopper body, as you see here. Now align the two holes on the other end of the brace with the mounting holes in the side of the tongue. Attach the brace to the tongue using two hex bolts, part D, with nylock nuts, part H, but do not tighten the nuts at this time. Insert a hex bolt, part D, through the front hole in the triangular mounting plate and the tongue brace, and secure it loosely with a nylock nut, part H. Then thread a flat washer, part F, onto a hex bolt, part C, and insert this bolt through the back hole in the mounting plate and the tongue brace. Also secure this bolt with a nylock nut, part H, but do not fully tighten. With the first tongue brace in position, repeat these steps and attach the second tongue brace to the other side of the hopper. When all the parts are in place, tighten all the bolts. Now you'll attach the flow control rod. Here's how. Begin by first making sure that both ferrules that you threaded onto the rod ends are adjusted so that about 10 threads of the rod, or about a half inch, extends through the ferrules. Then insert the short threaded parts of the ferrules into the small brackets that are riveted to the front of the flow plates, as you see here. Secure the ferrules into place using nylock nuts, part H, making them only finger tight at this time. Now take the flow control gauge, part 2 and place it onto the hopper brace so that the small notch in the gauge is towards the flow control arm. Next, insert a carriage bolt, part E, up through the bottom of the hopper brace and the long slot in the flow control gauge. Place a nylon washer, part G, onto the bolt and secure the assembly in place with the plastic knob, part L. If you've not already done so, insert the hitch pin, part J, through the holes in the hitch bracket and the tongue and secure it in place using the hair cotter pin, part K. With all the assembly steps complete and all the bolts properly tightened, your next step will be to check that the hopper flow plates are opening correctly. Begin by setting the flow control gauge at its highest setting. Then move the flow control arm away from the hopper until it rests against the gauge. The slots in the bottom of the hopper should now be completely open and the edge of the flow plate should be just clear of the ends of all the slots. If the flow plates are not straight with the slots, disconnect one of the ferrules and screw it up or down on the flow control rod, and then reconnect it to the rod. Should the flow plates open too far, or not far enough, disconnect both the rules and screw them up or down equally on the control rod, then reattach them to the flow plates. Now move the flow control arm towards the hopper and the off position. Check to make sure that the slots in the bottom of the hopper are completely covered by the flow plates. It is recommended that you also check the hopper flow plates for proper tension. To do this, first set the flow control gauge at a mid-range setting. Then move the flow control arm up against the gauge and press firmly against the front of the flow plates at the bottom of the hopper. The flow control arm should not move. If the control arm does move, tighten the nylock nuts on the flow control arm until movement is prevented. 